My name is Tom J. Erickethel, and uh, I'm a neurologist at the University of Alberta. And I'm going to talk to you today about the Stroke Ambulance Achieve project, moving to phases two and three. A few words about the disease the Stroke Ambulance is designed to treat. So stroke is a leading cause of disability in adults still. And of the 60 million or so deaths that occur every year in the world, stroke causes 10% of these deaths. And the cost to Alberta is in the order of 300 to 400 million dollars per year. So you can pretty much assure yourself that if you work in an inpatient setting or if you work in an emergency department, a stroke will be presenting to you soon. And if you think about five people that have a stroke, just to, to keep things simple, one patient ends up dead, one, one patient ends up with major disability, uh, one ends up with moderate disability but may get home, and one ends up with minor disability and may get back to work, and one makes a full recovery. But three out of five have an outcome that none of us would want to have. Are there treatments for stroke? Well, yes, absolutely. One of the treatments is intravenous tissue plasminogen activator, or TPA. And TPA has been studied in a number of trials with over 6,500 patients studied. And the evidence for TPA given less than four and a half hours from stroke onset is compelling and the elderly benefit as much or more. If you look at the curve on the left, it shows, uh, we call it the time to treatment decay curve. What it shows you here is declining benefit from TPA with increasing time from onset, with no benefit evident at around five hours, but we usually say four and a half hours is really our cutoff for treatment. It works in, in different subgroups, including those under 80, and in different subgroups of patients with different stroke severities as well. So Alberta's done a lot of work improving the access of the population to this treatment. And if you look back to 2005, prior to starting the Provincial Stroke Strategy, we had about 30% geographic coverage of the province in terms of access to TPA. And after the Alberta Provincial Stroke Strategy, we went from five thrombolysis centers to 18 across the province, giving us closer to 80% geographic coverage for thrombolysis for the population, over 98% in population terms. And this is by virtue of the northern and southern Alberta telestroke systems. This is really how we've extended access to thrombolysis. This is my colleague, Dr. Khan, and he's examining a patient in a different city, looking at their imaging via a, a telehealth hookup. And this is, of course, elaborate equipment, but we have laptops now so that allow us to, to do this from home. And it's telestroke and telehealth that's allowed this possibility. But even if you factor in a transfer distance around each primary stroke center, what you'll see is there remains a lot of area here where patients still are not close to a tertiary care center like Edmonton or, or Calgary or close to a primary stroke center. They're in between. And so the question is, what can we do for people in that situation where they're not actually close to care for stroke? Well, enter the mobile stroke unit, also called a stroke ambulance. Basically what this is, is it's a specialized ambulance that has a CT scanner in it and frequently video conferencing capabilities. And that allows a stroke physician who's maybe at a tertiary care center to treat this patient while interacting with pre-hospital crew and examining the patient via telehealth equipment. What do these units actually do? Is there any evidence that they allow us to treat more people or to treat faster? Well, in terms of treating faster, yes. Uh, one of the earlier trials of this was done in Germany. They found that the alarm to therapy decision time dropped from 76 minutes in a control group to 35 minutes in the mobile stroke unit group and they used sort of a quasi-randomized one week on, one week off design. So it definitely speeds the decision for thrombolysis and if you look at when in their disease course these patients are treated in this hyperacute period, if you look at the red bars which show you the time of treatment for patients enrolled in the Get With The Guidelines Quality Improvement Program in the United States. Those people are treated, you know, from 61 minutes out to, you know, close to much later. I mean, close to the four and a half hour window, actually. So, they, so there's a peak treatment between about 91 minutes and about 156 minutes or so, still within the three hour window, and then a few treated beyond that. But if you look at those treated in a particular stroke ambulance called the STEMO, they are treated on the average much earlier in the course of their 
disease. And of course, this is the hyperacute period, so we're talking about short time periods, you know, minutes difference. But still, there are more people treated around 46 to 61 minutes from onset. And if you consider that, you lose 2 million brain cells a minute in an acute stroke. And if you consider that graph I showed you with the declining benefit with time, this has the potential to salvage neurons compared to the standard of care. And if we look at their results in terms of alarm to IVTPA time, which was the primary outcome of this study, people treated in the mobile stroke unit or the stroke ambulance were treated an average of 40 minutes faster than those treated than those controls. So we're moving them closer to the left along that curve and with better cure rates in, th in theory. So could this technology be useful in Alberta where we have great distances and often distances between primary stroke centers and tertiary care centers? Well, we launched a stroke ambulance project, uh, which is Canada's first stroke ambulance, the Achieve project, explored the idea of whether there's a role for this kind of vehicle in the Canadian healthcare system where you've got geographic challenges and areas with low resources outside of cities that don't have fast access to care. So we created our stroke ambulance, the Edmonton Stroke Ambulance. This is described in, in another talk. But in general, we have a team that consists of an EMT, so basically a primary care paramedic, an advanced care paramedic, a specially trained nurse, a CT technologist, and frequently a stroke fellow, which is a, a neurologist who's a trainee in stroke, a stroke neurologist who's at the tertiary care center and links to them via telehealth. And the, the vehicle has a CT scanner, a portable lab analyzer, video conferencing equipment, a hydraulic leveling system, a large compartment. It weighs about 11 tons. I mean, it's or about somewhere between 9 and 10 tons, probably. So it's double the weight of a standard ambulance. And it's got TPA, it's got other medications, monitoring equipment, a ventilator if needed, uh, and then a coagulate check and a glucometer. So it's got a lot of equipment that you could use to treat patients out in the field. And that's how it looks with the doors open. So you can see the CT scanner here uh, in the center, that white, large white object, and all the other equipment that you might expect in an ambulance. And uh, of course, it's got video conferencing screens on, on the back door so that the patient can see the neurologist while the neurologist is examining the patient as well. And we designed the project in three phases. And phase one, which is a predominantly rural focus. Phase two, which is responding to Edmonton's own sites, which I'm going to tell you about in this talk. And then phase three, which is responding not to give TPA, but to expedite transport of patients for endovascular care, which we'll talk about in a minute. So phase one has been launched, and uh, it was launched February of 2017. Again, targeting these areas which aren't close to care. And we are doing a detailed evaluation, both clinical and health economic, of the costs and the benefits of this project with the perspective of the Canadian healthcare system. And this is a diagram of the 250 kilometer buffer zone or catchment area that we talk about when we're talking about the stroke ambulance. That's the deployment area in which it will go. Uh, it's sort of its drive radius. Uh, and so patients originating uh, in this area or just outside of this area, as long as there's a rendezvous within this catchment area, will dispatch the vehicle to deliver care. And this is just a non-comprehensive list of the different centers that could interact with the stroke ambulance for phase one. And this is sort of how it works. I mean, a patient goes to a local rural hospital with stroke symptoms, a physician on duty attends and contacts the stroke neurologist via Rapid North. And then we determine based on location, the location of other EMS vehicles, the, you know, the possible involvement of STARS, what the fastest route of care would be for this patient. And if we determine that the fastest route of care is going to be the stroke ambulance deployment, what happens is that patient is put into a rural ambulance which heads towards the city, and then the stroke ambulance is dispatched from the university hospital towards the rural ambulance. The vehicles can connect with each other, can see each other on their internet systems, and can speak to each other via radio, and they work out a, ro a safe rendezvous area, of which we've pre-designated a very large number of them. And the patient's transferred into the stroke ambulance, scanned, and then possibly treated with TPA, in which case they'll be brought to the university hospital. However, they might also be repatriated if they don't need that level of care, and we repatriate 30% of our patients to uh, another center that could better meet their care, or, or if, especially if transferred to the university hospital is not required for the kind of care they need. And of course, we're collecting data on this entire process to determine how effective it is. And the way it works really is, you know, there'll be an acute, the acute, it fits into the acute stroke call process uh, that's already existing with a few modifications. So if a patient is with an EMS crew or at a non-primary stroke center, uh, then in some cases you're just going to transfer them to the closest primary stroke center, emergency department, 
and then that's where the telestroke system will interact with them. However, if, if, if certain criteria are met, for example, they're in the stroke ambulance catchment area, regardless of severity, or if they're elsewhere with a LAMS of greater than or equal to four, and the LAMS is the LA motor scale, which is a screening scale for stroke, then there'll be a rapid call uh, between the non-primary stroke center or the EMS crew and the telestroke neurologist. And in this case, we may again make the right decision to get the patient the fastest care, which could be a number of things, including now the stroke ambulance as, as well, during its operational hours, which is basically 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. on weekdays. So that was phase one. Phase two was launched in June of 2017. And what we're doing here is we're expanding the stroke ambulance service to suspected stroke patients presenting to hospitals within the Edmonton zone that don't have CT capability or access to TPA protocols. So in other words, they just can't treat a patient with thrombolysis at that center for whatever reason. So we will dispatch the stroke ambulance in zone, but in this case, we, we don't rendezvous. We actually send the stroke ambulance directly to that center. For example, we'll send it to the Northeast Center, we'll send it to uh, Leduc, we'll send it, you know, in some cases to the Sturgeon, Fort Saskatchewan. So that's how we, we do it. We don't rendezvous in the city. We dispatch the vehicle directly to the place where the patient is. Uh, that won't be a clinic that has to be, you know, generally it's going to be an emergency department. And the possible locations for phase two deployments are Devon, uh, Fort Saskatchewan, Leduc, Misericordia, the Northeast Community Health Center, Westview Health Center, Stony Plain, the Strathcona Community Hospital, and also the Sturgeon Community Hospital. Now, as it turns out, for walk-in strokes, you know, the Miz, Strathcona, the Sturgeon can sometimes give TPA on site. So we do this on a case-by-case -case basis. And depending what's going on, we, we make a decision. So we may or may not deploy to those areas. They may actually treat with thrombolysis, and we wouldn't do a phase two deployment. We might do a phase three deployment, which I'll talk about shortly. But those are the centers where we may deploy to. And of course, if you have a suspected stroke patient and they present to your ED, call rapid and connect with Telestroke, and that's how we may dispatch the stroke ambulance if it makes sense for your patient. I want to update you very quickly on endovascular therapy with, for stroke with large vessel occlusion. Just as, as, as you're quite familiar with in cardiac, primary PCI or PCI following lytic for a STEMI is a treatment that's been accepted. Uh, it's only been in the last three years, though, that this kind of treatment has been proven for ischemic stroke, and it applies to an ischemic stroke with a LVO, or a large vessel occlusion, an MCA occlusion, a basilar occlusion. And what's, what we found through clinical trials just published in the last few years is that treatment within six hours of onset or within six hours of the time last seen well, uh, if you deliver them to endovascular therapy, there's an absolute increase in good outcomes of 13 to 23 percent, which is quite substantial, the same or double the benefit of TPA, uh, depending on which trial you look at, and relative risk benefits of 70 percent, which is also remarkable for such a severe disease as stroke. But now, in the last year, two other trials have published their results, and now highly selected patients between 6 to 24 hours from onset, or within 6 to 24 hours of their last seen well time, could benefit from endovascular therapy with an increase in good outcomes with absolute risk benefits of 28 to 36 percent and relative risk benefits of again 70 percent. So really an opportunity but it's also going to add some complexity to the stroke system to screen out those patients who might actually benefit from this therapy because there'll be a lot of people in 6 to 24 hours whereby there's no benefit possible because the stroke has already completed itself. However, the stroke ambulance is a tool in helping deliver these people to quick care. So phase three of the stroke ambulance project is, was implemented January 22nd. And basically in the Edmonton zone hospitals, if you have a patient that might have already gotten TPA or perhaps they're a wake-up stroke or an inpatient stroke and they're, they're not going to be a TPA candidate, but they're still a possible endovascular therapy candidate, we will dispatch the stroke ambulance to them to deliver that patient to the university hospital for care. Uh, for endovascular treatment. And the advantage is we can actually start examining, even if we, even though we can't give TPA, we can start examining this patient in the vehicle, in the stroke ambulance. And we can get a sense of how severely affected they are. You have a staff physician who's examined them and we can actually mobilize our neurointerventional cath lab faster. And that'll actually allow us to shave up to 30 minutes off the door to treatment times for some of these patients because we've done so much stuff before they've arrived with, with the particular benefit of being able to examine them before they arrive via video conference while the vehicle is moving. So if you suspect your patient has a stroke 
within this window with a large vessel occlusion, call Rapid North for a consult with the telestroke neurologist. Currently, we have not changed the stat stroke window in Alberta yet. It still remains six hours and wake-ups, wake-ups presenting within six hours, but very shortly there will be a change in the stat stroke window to patients presenting. It'll be expanded to those patients presenting within six to 24 hours with a high LAM score of four or more. Uh, though they will still be considered a stat stroke. So that will add a lot of complexity to our system, but I think hopefully for the benefit of being able to treat more people with endovascular therapy. Just expanding our window to six hours and wake-ups in April 20th of 2017 has doubled the number of patients that have had access to endovascular care in our zone. So the possible locations again for phase three deployments are again the exact same hospitals, Devon, Fort Saskatchewan, Grey Nuns, Leduc, Misericordia, the Northeast Centre, Westview, Royal Alex, Strathcona, Community Hospital, and the Sturgeon. So even if you get TPA at these centres, for walk-ins, for example, we can still utilize the stroke ambulance for a phase three deployment to get them to endovascular care faster. And this will be people who've had a CT angiogram generally that shows a large vessel occlusion or somebody whose clinical deficits are so severe, we may just deploy and do the CT angiogram at the university hospital. We're doing a very intense analysis of this project, both using clinical data and also uh, system-wide, you know, administrative data sets, uh, and we have experts in health technology assessment that are assisting in this analysis. We're hoping to answer some questions for the Canadian healthcare system in terms of how this vehicle should be used. Should it be, you know, just rural, be rurally based, should it be used in the in cities? If this was to be implemented across Canada, if and then places are considering this, what can we tell the Canadian health system about how to use this kind of a vehicle? And there you go. It's our um, our 11-ton bouncing baby stroke ambulance. Still a toddler, I suppose. Still yet less than two years old. And uh, it is in, in service and being deployed. So it is Canada's first stroke ambulance. So thanks a lot for your attention. Uh, there's a lot of exciting advances in stroke care. Alberta is a leader in stroke care, and we are still improving. The stroke ambulance is the latest technology available to treat stroke, and it will be carefully evaluated. And phases... One, two, and three have now launched uh, within northern Alberta and within the Edmonton zone. So thanks again for your attention.